Joe Biden has unveiled his much-awaited national security strategy. He has had his fair share of foreign tensions in the last two years, probably much more than presidents have in one entire term. A messy withdrawal from Afghanistan, China's growing hostility in the Indo-Pacific, and Russia invading Ukraine. The United States is geographically far from these crises, yet right at the center of its politics. And to no one's surprise, the foreign policy report is laden with Beijing. The U.S. has called China the biggest geopolitical challenge for the country. The exact quote says China is the only competitor with both the intent to reshape the international order and the economic, diplomatic, military and technological power to do it. And experts have branded the current U.S.-China relationship to be at its lowest. It took a nosedive in 2018 when Donald Trump was the president and it hasn't gotten any better under Joe Biden. On more than one occasion, he has angered Beijing by extending military aid to Taiwan in case of an invasion, 
The area of trade has also been a bone of contention. Washington has imposed punitive tariffs on the dragon and Beijing has responded with tariffs on over $110 billion of U.S. products. Let's move to Washington's uh, arch rival Moscow. Apart from obvious mention of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the strategy also talked about 11 years of the Syrian civil war. Since 2015, Moscow has been backing Bashar al-Assad's government by providing it arms. Washington also laid out the Kremlin interfering in America's internal matters. In unexpected mention, Iran also fared in U.S. national security strategy. Washington referred to Tehran as a small autocratic power acting aggressively. From the stalled 2015 nuclear deal to Iran's influence in West Asia, the Biden administration is preparing for other means if diplomacy fails. The report says, and I'm quoting, Iran interferes in the internal affairs of the neighbors, proliferates missiles and drones through proxies, and is plotting to harm Americans. Washington also said that Tehran is advancing a nuclear program beyond any credible civilian need. Over to India now. Washington has called New Delhi its key partner. The Biden administration wants to continue working with its Indian counterpart and highlighted the two countries' shared view for a free and open Indo-Pacific. To achieve this and... Xi Jinping wants reunification with Taiwan and he's made it very clear during his two terms as Chinese president. We do not promise to renounce the use of force and reserve the option to use all necessary measures to achieve this and prevent Taiwan independence. Next week, China's ruling Communist Party is expected to hand Mr Xi a third five-year term as president after abolishing two term limits in 2018. And Taiwan is concerned. The President Xi will indeed use force to make the democratically ruled island of Taiwan part of China. So I do think that in the next five years, uh, it will be more intense for the cross-strait uh, relations it will be more unstable. I think that Xi Jinping would like to unify Taiwan as soon as possible. For more than 70 years, Taiwan has lived with the threat of a Chinese invasion. And in August, China held its biggest ever show of military force in the air and seas around Taiwan, including the firing of ballistic missiles. <laughs> At their recent National Day celebrations, Taiwan's president says they're increasing military spending in the hopes of deterring a Chinese attack. The broadest consensus among the Taiwanese people and our various political parties is that we must defend our national sovereignty and our free and democratic way of life. On this point, we have no room for compromise. U.S. President Joe Biden has already said that U.S. forces would help defend Taiwan in the event of an invasion. So if Xi Jinping does want to cement his legacy by achieving what no predecessor has done, then it won't come easy. If the attack on Taiwan fails, it would be a very big political disaster for the CCP. Taiwan is easy to defend and hard to attack, so I think that in the near future Xi Jinping will be a bit calmer after securing his third term, but in the long term, of course, he will want to occupy Taiwan. In the meantime, Taiwan is preparing, hoping to prevent what is happening in Ukraine from happening across the Taiwan Strait. Talia Olatia, ABC News. North Korea fired a ballistic missile toward the sea and flew warplanes near the border with South Korea, further raising tensions between those two countries. It was North Korea's 15th missile launch since it resumed its, act to, uh, its testing last month. In response, South Korea today imposed unilateral sanctions on the North for the first time in five years. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipe. The U.S. is upping its efforts to protect its citizens from the impact of any radiological and nuclear emergencies. The U.S. Health Department is purchasing a drug that treats blood cell injuries caused due to acute radiation syndrome in adult and pediatric patients. The uh, drug called Implate is being purchased from California-based company called Amgen. Implate treats acute radiation syndrome, which is also known as radiation sickness. 
it occurs when a person is exposed to a high dose of penetrating radiation. ARS can lead to uncontrolled and life-threatening bleeding. MPLATE is also approved for patients with blood disorder that results in low platelet counts. Repurposing of the drugs for acute radiation syndrome helps to sustain their availability. Amgen has developed MPLATE along with Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, a part of the HHS administration for strategic preparedness and response. The money for purchases of this drug comes from the $290 million designated funding under the project BioShield.